Welcome back to the Aussie Shed. I've just been having a look at the uh, at the bed of the mini lathe, and you can see here she's got quite a rock to her. Now the bench is pretty flat. It's obviously not surface plate flat, but it's pretty flat. It's flatter than that. So I thought I'd. Uh, I'd throw the angle meter on there and just use that to just give me a, a quick and dirty parallel on these foot plates in this position. It appears that I've got to either grind down this corner or this corner here. There's a lot less to grind down on this side because it's, uh, it's a lot thinner. So I'm going to have a crack at that. This side, this is pretty flat. I've just rubbed a file over that. Not too bad. So uh, I think I'll, this is quite hard, so I think I'll go at it with a four inch grinder and just take a bit off that and smooth it off and see how we go and get to a point where it doesn't rock. And uh, cause I'm, I'm in the process of preparing this to paint it. And I want to get everything sorted out with it before I go, uh, go put and paint to it. I'll probably, I might just go over some of these pretty horrible casting marks and just clean it up a little bit. The, um, it looks like the foot of the, uh, of the lathe bed has looked like locating dowels. I'd say that's possibly from, uh, from the manufacturer there on the other end as well. But while it's in this position, I'll re-drill these. These are the original um, threaded holes, which are to hold it in the crate when it comes. They're only quite small. So uh, I'm going to drill and tap these out to a bigger size, just so there's something more substantial to bolt it down to the bench when the time comes that's them coming through just there so they'll just be a bit bigger thread there's plenty of room to bring the thread through without hitting the edge so yeah that's where i'm at i'll go at this with a grinder yeah i was hugging a tree when a lady at the zoo was amused by me i said hey girl you think I'm cute to see? You're cute too. So come and get yourself introduced to me. She got closer. I said, listen, you look like your life's good, but one thing's missing, it's me. I might be the wrong species, but love accommodates for many different niches. So don't let it trouble you. I may be an animal, but I'm a fanatical cuddler. She wanted to snuggle. I told her I'd love to. I said I'd climb down, then I'd come and climb up her. I wanna ride up on your back like a rucksack What's that? You like my tummy? Wanna touch that? Tickle it My first soft, come and jiggle it I'll wrap my paws around till you're in the thick of it Yeah I wanna squeeze you nice and tight Then hug a little harder And love you like koalas do I wanna snooze in the sunlight Like koalas do I love you koala Don't be taking pictures of the platypus Cause you will need your wrist for hugging me to bits What flavour are your lips? Welcome back Basically all I've done is just clean all of the really rough casted areas uh, Clean them right back On the end there and stuff where it was just terrible Basically for no, no other reason than a smooth surface once it's painted is really really easy to keep clean wipe over a rough cast surface uh, that's covered in crap and it just does not want to come out so that was the main motivation for cleaning up all of the uh, all of the rough casting before it was painted uh, just to try and get everything nice and tidy so it just means it, it, it's a lot easier to maintain it when it's clean uh, okay so there are a couple of things that I've uh, I've tidied up while I've had it at this point I've seen quite a few people complaining that the area under the lathe bed here is uh, rough. Now, it is actually machined under there, but the problem is paint. This area has, has been painted. They haven't masked up under there. So a lot of the paint has run and dripped down onto the underside of the, the lathe bed. And there's just lumps and bumps of paint. So I'll just show you with the camera. So just in here. So basically what I did, 
I just went at it with a woodworking chisel and just scraped and scraped uh, the back there until all the paint was removed from the underside of the bed. I've just given it a wipe over and now it is very good. The, the milling is a little bit rough under there but it's, it's passable. But initially, yeah, there was a big build up of paint, particularly in the corners, uh, which would have made it absolutely terrible to uh, push stuff along. It would have been rather annoying. So as you can see, there's, there's a mark where the milling finished. They are actually milled on the underside. So I suggest if you are having problems with this area, you need to uh, flip it upside down and get in there with a chisel and uh, have a good sort of a scrape. A chisel, I, I used the chisel because it was really the, uh, the only tool I could get in there that was nice and sharp and able to peel the paint off and get right into that corner there. But uh, yeah, so that's what I did with that. Also, while I had it at this stage, I, uh, I went at the underside of the, of the ways here with a, a known flat diamond plate. Once again, this was, uh, this was quite coarse. Uh, the milling was uh, was very rough. It did seem it did seem quite flat, but but uh, yeah, a lot of kind of roughness just generally over the surface area. So um, I've done quite a lot of work over that with a uh, with a diamond plate. I'll just put the camera back, and now it's it's very smooth, particularly both sides. I don't know if you can see. Oh damn, I'll take the camera off again. Okay. You can still see a lot of the, the milling marks on the underside of the back. So, and I've been going at that quite substantially for probably about 20 minutes with a 140 grit diamond plate uh, by hand with WD-40 just to get it to that point it's it's reasonably reasonably smooth to touch but like i say initially um it was very very coarse very very rough there didn't appear to be any high spots um you can see there's a few little low sections but nothing that's going to cause any problems but once i get the machine together i will probably lap everything in anyway but at least this gives me a good start knowing that uh, you know, the majority of that, that, that rough milling and uh, rough casting has been removed from those areas. So that's about it, I reckon. All in all, not too bad. Now to, uh, to mask it up and get a bit of paint on it. I think it'll look quite good. Looks good in primer. And even better in paint. Nice and smooth. Turned out really, really well. Uh, definitely worth putting in all the extra effort to make sure that once it gets to this point, you don't have to keep frigging around with it. From here, the only additional things that I'm doing is I'm cutting some uh, some plates to mount um, on the foot here on both ends. I'm I'm putting a 175 um, mil long by 100 mil wide, 12 mil thick uh, flat bar bolted through the original mounting holes here that I uh, that I made a bit larger. Uh, that's so that I've got a bigger area to bolt it down to the bench with. Uh, probably. Um, when I do decide to mount this to the bench, I'll probably strip some of this, uh, some of this ply off and uh, put some steel in underneath and mount it directly through into the steel. But uh, everything's been corrected. It, uh, it doesn't have any rock to it anymore. Even in the motor mount area and everything, it's all nice and smooth. So it'll be easy to keep clean, which is really the whole idea. But very good to be able to get under the, to get under and clean up underneath the ways and everything before uh, having any sort of assembly on it, but now I'm I know that at this point it's as good as it can possibly be um, There's not too much more that could be done with a uh, a, a Chinese mini lathe bed of this style uh, To improve it from here on in so I hope you enjoyed that. That's how I've approached 
making adjustments to the mini lathe bed so that it suits my purpose a lot better. One of the other reasons for painting it was just because the original finish that's on there is just really, really terrible. I've no idea what it is, but as far as wiping the lathe over, the lathe bed over and all the other associated parts, it softens up uh, with wax and grease remover or any kind of solvent and it starts coming off in your rag and it gets really sticky whereas at least putting you know a proper finish on there and this is just a spray can silver grey hammer tone finish uh, it's nothing fancy at all but it's quite resilient to solvents and cleaners it, it'll really be good to keep the thing clean at least I'll have a fighting chance with it now whereas that original finish was just absolutely terrible so I hope you enjoy what I've done with the uh, with the lathe bed. There's not too much more I think I could do to it to make any more improvements on it at this stage. So uh, at the next stage when I start loading all the uh, all the components back onto it and start lapping things in, I'm starting from a position out in front where um, I won't be dealing with uh, large imperfections that I'm trying to get to remove with uh, with lapping paste. I hope you found that useful, and if you do, remember like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.